Hello everyone, I'm Randy Arrington and welcome to the second episode of Page Valley Living. We're here today outside of the Luray Page County Visitors Center here today the, in the former depot in Luray. And coming up in just a few minutes, this is where we'll be talking to Miss Jackie Wood here and talking about all of the upcoming Halloween happenings that will be going on in downtown Luray this weekend. And then we're going to travel a little bit further down Route 340 and talk to some other folks about things happening in Stanley and Shenandoah as well. But first, before we go to headlines, we're going to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, Luray Caverns. The Smithsonian once said, it is safe to say that there is probably no other cave in the world more completely and profusely decorated than that of Luray. Come see Mother Nature showing off only at Luray Caverns. Visit them online at LuraeCaverns.com to plan your trip today. We are filming on Monday, October 23rd, but the second episode of Page Valley Living will be airing on Wednesday, October the 25th. And now for headlines, looking back at the week that was in the Page Valley. Last Monday in Shenandoah, town officials hosted a ribbon cutting to recognize the November 6th opening of Moving Mountains Academy for Early Learning. Monica Cubbage will serve as the center's director and manage a staff of 15. About 30 students are signed up so far, but the facility has a capacity for 85 and accepts babies and toddlers. Last Monday evening, the Page County Board of Supervisors set a public hearing for their next regular meeting on Monday, the November the 20th, to receive public comment on amendments to the county's campground ordinance. After the county received concerns about future campgrounds and complaints about current campgrounds, the Page County Planning Commission formed a subcommittee to study the issue and drafted changes that the full commission unanimously, ad unanimously adopted back in September. In Luray, the Chop House Bistro officially cut the ribbon last Tuesday on their new eatery at 132 East Main Street in downtown Luray. From seafood to steak, salads to burgers, and veggie options as well. A trio of investors from Harrisonburg hope to bring their culinary success from the friendly city over to the Page Valley. In Stanley, the town council last Wednesday discussed the ongoing effort to light up the walking trail in Edgood Park. Quotes from a vendor local officials met at the recent Virginia Municipal League conference were discussed. Stanley Homecoming Committee Representative Mark Stroop asked the council to make every effort to install the additional lighting in the park before the next homecoming in the summer of 2024. Looking now at the world of sports, both Luray and Page took it on the chin Friday night as they played some of the region's best. Luray fell 54-7 to to the number one team in Class 2 football in Central of Woodstock. Page lost 69-20 to to visiting Madison. This Friday night, the Bulldogs host Clark and Page will travel to Woodstock. In volleyball, Luray swept Page in three sets last Thursday in both teams' regular season finale. And then Luray turned around to host the Panthers again in the quarterfinal round of the Bull Run District Tournament. But that's happening tonight on this Monday night as we're recording. We don't know the results yet, but the winner was to advance to the semifinals on Tuesday. The Berlin Championship will be played on Thursday. In competition cheer, the Page County Panthers captured the Bull Run District Championship last Wednesday in Quicksburg. Senior Bethany Lucas was named the Bull Run's Cheerleader of the Year, as well as earning first team all district honors, along with senior Brianna Thompson and junior Madison Murphy. Sophomores McKenna Parlett and Claire Cash earned second team all district honors coming up this weekend folks in page county right here in downtown Luray, trackside theater presenting three showings of the production beauty and the beast bed and breakfast and that's at 7 30 on friday and saturday october 27th 28th and at 3 p.m there's a matinee on sunday october 29th if you've never been to trackside it is a unique little theater that offers stage opportunities to local youth and adults you won't be disappointed. And now folks, let's turn our attention back to Miss Jackie Wood. Now you folks here in Luray have got a lot of stuff planned coming up here uh, for Halloween. Let, tell me a little bit about that. We are very excited this year, Randy, because for the first time we're going to shut down the street. So from the railroad tracks to the intersection at Broad Street, that part of section of town will be closed. We're gonna close the street at four. Trick or treat will take place from five to seven. We'll be ha Packer will be having the costume contest at the auction house parking lot where Mama's Consignments is now, the, the big white building across from yeah. Town Hall. 
that parking lot will be where the Rapaka costume contest will be held okay, this year. We've right. got some really fun things around the costume contest this year. I think that families are going to enjoy it. And don't forget to dress up your pets because we even have a pet competition. <laughs> ah. So we're going to have a lot of great prizes and a lot of great things for families to enjoy. Ah. And then, of course, trick or treat. Well, they will trick or treat up and down Main Street in all of our business storefronts. Vendors that are not part of our Main Street but want to be a part of this celebration. They are going to be set up in on the center line of, of, of downtown, so they'll have their tables and candies there. We will also have folks set up on the PAL Plaza, where they'll be handing wow. out candy as well. And then the kids will make their way around and then back up to the town hall parking lot, where the Lorraine Police Department will be doing a candy shop. My goodness, that is going to be a river of sugar running down Main Street, I will tell you what. But in the past, you guys... Uh, have had the trick-or-treaters go up and down the sidewalk. Now, what led to the street being closed off this year? Just because in the last couple of years, we have seen this event grow and with lots and lots of children. And when you think about it, it's smart for parents. It's a one and done. You can bring your children down. They get a ton of candy. They get to have, you know, have the costume contest, have lots of fun things to do. It's safe and it's in, in that. And so, Last year I noticed that doing there's a lot of traffic going through town because it's a busy evening. Right. So our town council and our mayor, we discussed it and our town manager and we decided this year let's shut the street down and make it really safe for our kids. Now I heard you say as we were walking in that you're still taking vendors uh, I guess to give out candy. How many you got so far? So far, I have 25 non-Main Street vendors that are non-Main Street vendors, so, plus all of our business owners. So, so make sure you bring the big bag. Bring the big bag, <laughs> yes, or bring an extra bag. Yes. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. I got one more question for you. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Twizzlers. 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 Very interesting. Now, has that been since you were a kid, or did, has that changed? That has changed since I've been oh, a grown-up. When I was okay. a kid, it was popcorn balls. Okay, okay. We had a lady that lived on our road that always made homemade, po uh, homemade popcorn balls, and we couldn't wait to get her house to get our popcorn What, what was her name? Her name was um, Edna Foltz. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for being with, here with us today. Good luck with all the ghosts and ghouls and goblins. Any uh, last-minute tips for the parents or any precautions they should be taking before coming down or anything? Just make sure that your kids' costumes fit them properly and they're secured well. And if your child is wearing any kind of face covering, make sure they can see. All right. <laughs> well, Jackie, thank you so much for Absolutely. talking with us. Folks, we're now going to take a little break and we're going to go right down Route 340 and talk with some folks in Stanley and Shenandoah about stuff going on there this weekend as well. And hello everybody, we're now here, a little further as I said, down Route uh, 340, and we're at the town of Stanley, and we're talking with town manager Terry Pettit. Terry, thanks for being with us and talking with us today. Glad to do it this afternoon. Now be a little careful behind you, there's some, look like some blades behind you and stuff. Be, oh yes. Please be careful. Y'all, y'all have really decked it out here. We got a couple of coffins here going on. What's going to be happening for Halloween with this block party? All right, we have our annual block party that we've had since uh, 2018 except for the year that COVID did. Okay. All right, we have some back, backdrops this year. We also added, so. Okay, yeah, they, I like them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they look good. How many vendors y'all gonna have handing out candy? We got 25 to 27 this year. Woo, like I said in Luray, it's gonna be a, a river of sugar coming down <laughs> Main Street. <isn't> yes, it, <laughs> it is. <laughs> now, you said y'all been doing this since 2018. Have you always blocked off the street and made it a block party? No, I'll tell you what happened. In 2018, uh, right after Halloween, uh, so for Reed's hire, and I'll give her credit, Stacy Mason. Uh -huh. You know, she said, "Well, why don't next year, 2019, we block the road off?" You know, I thought, "Well, it's a lot of work, lead out permits and all that." <laughs> but we looked into it, and so we tried it, and it was a success. You know, the 2019 we had about 150 people, something like that, and in 2020 the COVID hit. But then each year has grown. Last year we had 600 uh, kid, children with about 1,000 people attending. No kidding, yes, a thousand people right here. Well, now that's well, a block party, right? That's there. a block party. From, <laughs> yeah, from the intersection of Honeyville to railroad tracks, we, we had them jammed in. Here. So y'all go all the way back up to the theater, uh, yes. where the Dollar of the Stars yes. Theater is, and then come down to Edgar Park. Yeah, down to the railroad. Down the railroad track. Yes. Okay. Is there going to be anything going on in Edgar Park? No, just the park. Is, this is just right yeah. in here. Yeah, okay. we have all kinds of vendors. We set them in the street. Set them right in the street. Set them in the street. We got music going on. We got. Uh, Different, all kinds of candy have ever derived. I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure. Now, uh, I, I was going to ask you if y'all do a costume contest. 
No, not this. We are doing it this year. All right. Yes, we are. It looks like we are doing it this year. He was checking with Terry. Terry Beard. Our park director says we are doing it this year. So we have to make sure we wear our costumes. Okay, okay. And you got yours all ready to go. Oh, my, I got mine all right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got Terry, thank you so much for talking with us. I got one more question for you now. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, the whole world will know. It's Reese's. Reese's? <laughs> <laughs> you and my wife. I love Reese's. She loves cups. a peanut butter cup. Oh, I love Reese's cups. Them. I'm a sucker for a Twix bar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, thanks so much for talking with yeah, us today. Yes, I appreciate right. it. Thank I appreciate you. it. Right. Thank you. Right. And folks, we're going to head a little further on down 340 now and get ready to go down to the town of Shenandoah. They've got some ghost stories coming up at the museum. And hello, everybody. And now we're here in the town of Shenandoah in the Shenandoah Museum and Visitor Center. And we're here with Laura Jenkins, the curator of the museum. And I think you guys have something very special coming up with a spooky storyteller. Yes. Tell me do. all about it. Yes. So Susan Clark, who is with the Virginia Storytelling Alliance, mm -hmm. she is coming here at on October the 28th on Saturday. And she's going to start at 1.30 and it's for 7 and up. She's going to be telling us some spooky ghost stories. So we're very excited about that. And what time does that start? It starts at 1.30. Okay, and, and last, what, maybe an hour or so? She's going to do it for about 45 minutes. And I understand that she is an excellent storyteller. Excellent. She's been doing it for 30 years. Wow. And she got, does go to uh, libraries. She goes to schools. I think she's going to be a perfect fit. Uh, normally, she does Appalachian tales and oh, Native, right. Native American tales. Okay. But when she and I were communicating via email, um, the dates that she was available, uh, she gave me several. But then she also mentioned, if I do it on October 28th, we can do ghost stories. And I said, oh, yes, let's do that. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> and you're going to wear that hat that day, too, I Absolutely. hope. Absolutely. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Well, I'm going to tell you what. This is an impressive museum. I've known about it a long time, been here a few times with my family. And if you will stick around just for a moment, I hope that you'll tell us more about it. Will you stick around just for a second? I sure will. All right. We're going to tell you a little bit more now about our sponsor once again. We want to visit with them, Lorray Caverns. Where, that's where you can hear music of symphonic quality from ancient stone formations on the great stalactite organ, the largest musical instrument in the world, only at Lorray Caverns. Visit them online at LorrayCaverns.com to plan your trip today. And now let's turn our attention back to the Shenandoah Museum and Miss Laura Jenkins. And one of the things I chose this corner to be here in this part of the museum because this is one of the things that I think makes this place truly unique and have a wide uh, reach. Yeah. And what I'm talking about is the USS Shenandoah. Now tell me what that is and why you have stuff here in the museum sure. about it. There are actually, in, through history, there have been five USS Shenandoahs. There has been four ships and one airship. Uh, the last ship, the USS Shenandoah AD-44, was a destroyer tender ship. And not the reason why we have this all here isn't because anyone from Shenandoah served. It was because of the name, the USS Shenandoah. They actually adopted us and other um, people that had the same name, like Shenandoah County, Shenandoah National Park. And when they did their inaugural commissioning of the ship, they invited all of those people they adopted. So in 1984, they invited um, all of the town of Shenandoah, and there were actually members of the town of Shenandoah that went there wow. for the commissioning. And uh, so ever since then, we've been in really good communication with the crew. And y'all have had a number of crew yeah, members come back, absolutely. and you've had some uh, commanders, uh, yes, Captain, Captain Shanahan. Captain Shanahan, a lot of the memorabilia here is actually when he passed his away, his widow, uh, donated a lot of the items here and then when uh, the crew found out that there were other items and they started donating and then now that they know that there's a museum they've been coming and then what is what is their reaction when they come back and see uh, stuff from the ship they love it they really love it they're they're like when they actually they walk in and of course I can tell they're wearing a USS Shenandoah hat usually and they're like where's my room and <laughs> So I immediately bring them back here, and they just love seeing 
um, all the memorabilia that we have. And, and well, the yeah. other part of the museum that's interesting is obviously that goes back with the history of the town about the railroad. Yes. And folks can actually sit oh, right yeah. in the other room mm-hmm. and watch cars changing yes. over. And that is the only place, I believe, between, now correct me, Hagerstown, Maryland, Maryland. and Roanoke? Correct. That Virginia. Is right. Yeah, this is the only working rail yard still between those two points. So they can actually watch the Norfolk Southern rail yard workers come in and switch out the trains, a couple and decouple, you know, they switch in engines, you know, they're heading either to Roanoke to our south or Hagerstown, Maryland to our north. So you can sit here, of course, I don't have a schedule, I'm sorry about that, Um, but if you're lucky enough, you'll be able to see them coming in and out. Well, well, the train uh, and the railroad is obviously a big part of this museum. There's a yes. miniature engine in there in the main room yes. and a lot of railroad memorabilia. So that is very cool. The other, I would say, is the other big element of this museum is local history yes. and Shenandoah history. I mean, you've got everything from uh, the whip of Mr. Mims, I believe. Milnes. Milnes, Milnes yes. I'm sorry, Milnes. Yes. And then also, uh, you've even got sports memorabilia from like Mr. Mr. Uh, Buddy Comer, who recently passed away. Uh, and Wayne. Yeah, and Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, we have uh, a lot of Wayne Comers, Detroit Tigers, um, some th- memorabilia that he actually donated to us. Um, we have a really neat 1968 World Series uh, Detroit Tigers poster that Wayne uh, had signed. So yeah, I apologize yeah. for getting that wrong. His it, it was I believe his brother or cousin. Brother, they were brother, both, they buddy. Were, yeah, the, he it, passed away about two yes, a year or two ago. Yes, yeah. exactly. But they were signed at the same time. It was, you know, a yeah. really nice story that two brothers from the town of Shenandoah were signed to the Washington Senators. Right. And and uh, then one of them played on a World Series yeah, championship yeah, team. Yeah, Wayne. And I believe that's the last time Detroit won a World Series. I think so. The last time the Tigers did. I know some exactly. faithful, hardcore Detroit Tiger fans that are waiting for that day to come <laughs> back around. Yes. Well, uh, I got one more question. Oh, no, we're going to talk about uh, what else you've got for Halloween. Now, y'all have yeah. another event planned for Halloween here yeah. in the town of Shenandoah. What yeah, is we that? do. So on October 31st, the town always will have uh, Halloween observed. Uh, we don't want anybody confused. Um, so it's always going to be October 31st is the when everyone go trick-or-treating. But the appetizer, I like to call it the appetizer <laughs> event, because the main entree, of course, is trick-or-treating. Sure. But the, the appetizer event is what I call the Halloween costume parade that we have at the River Park. So from four o'clock to six o'clock at our Shenandoah River Park at 315 Morrison Road, uh, we will have food, uh, we'll have some uh, games for for kids, and then there's gonna be at least eight um, businesses or um, civic organizations, churches set up for with candy as well. Uh, and the, at 4.30 is when the kids and the adults can okay. go along. I have a nice little walking circle that <laughs> they can you know get to show off their costumes wonderful and wonderful and then um by six o'clock they leave and then they can also go to the trunk retreat at shendo elementary school that's going to be immediately right after uh, okay and then the main event is the trick-or-treating trick-or-treating yeah. well i have one piece of advice watch out for the zombies <laughs> In my experience, you just can't trust them. Uh, you just can't trust them. But anyway, uh, Laura Jenkins here. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to ask you one last one. Okay. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, no brainer. The Reese's pumpkins. I don't know wow. what they do differently than a regular <laughs> Reese cup. But when they make the Reese cup pumpkins... It's out of this world. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And hang right here with us as we close out. We'd like to thank Eleanor Arrington, our director of photography, for handling all the the behind-the-camera action today. And next Wednesday, we're going to be talking with some of the folks who are preparing for that big day in November. They're going to show us about uh, the life of a ballot and what a ballot goes through and what to expect when you go to the polls on Election Day, November the 7th. If you enjoy the show, make sure to hit that like button, share it with a friend. Please click click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel as well. And please remember to have your pet spayed or neutered and visit all of our furry friends down at the Page County Animal Shelter and help them find a forever home. Until next week, I'm Randy Arrington saying enjoy that Page County living.